<laughs> Gen Z is making date are making dates to go to yoga and or fitness boot camps rather than wait for it a bar. Um, the post profiles several different young people like yourself. Uh, that have opted out of going out for drinks after meeting someone that they want to hang out with, and it's just all fitness all the time. You got your yoga. Uh, Amaral, a 27-year-old who works in tech and lives in Charlotte. Let me give you a little behind the scenes on any of these articles, people. Amaral is a friend of the person that wrote this article. Uh, oh. And uh, <laughs> that's why they used only that name. And this probably isn't even a trend, but it's a quick thing to file. <laughs> and fake trend, and now we're talking about it. Anyway, back to the story. But it's uh, a per- talker. <laughs> it's a talker, and we like those. Um, she uh, proposed uh, the war- uh, yoga uh, as an alternate for going out to a bar with this one dude. She was pleasantly surprised when he said yes. They had a great time. I love getting to see how he faced not knowing what he was doing and maybe not be great at something, she continued, adding that they went out a second time before things, quote, fizzled. Oh, well. Next, a survey (laughs) conducted by dating app Bumble um, in April 2023 found that 46% of Gen Zers and millennials in the U.S. have gone on an active first date, such as exercising, attending a fitness class, or going for a bike ride. Berenberg research revealed that Gen Zers and millennials consume significantly less booze than older generations did when they were young. Um, dating app Hinge found that 30% of its younger users prefer sober dates. Jake Emanuel, 27-year-old yoga instructor, uh, opted for a fitness date with uh, the dude he went out with. Uh, he found that going to a bar or restaurant with a potential mate and not ordering an alcoholic beverage doesn't work with, quote unquote, the vibe. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, now, Kate, you are sober now. Yeah. Is it difficult to date as a result? Actually, no, because. You're hot. <laughs> oh, so, that's the thing. I don't even know why I'm asking. If you were ugly and sober, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I wasn't sober, I would be ugly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, there's like Shit, a, yeah. There's a curve there. It's yeah. like I'm a million times more attractive now than <laughs> when I was drinking tons of Corona and Jameson. Um, because that just ages you. Alcohol, like, really is not Botox. Alcohol right, is not it's Botox. Getting close to home. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but did you not find that it was sort of, uh, you know, what's the cliche about it just being an elixir when you're meeting someone and yeah. it helps with the nerves and stuff like that? Obviously, it's a crutch yeah. and it can be more so as it goes on. But you didn't worry about that when you started dating sober? Well, my last boyfriend, I just kind of like threw it on the table from the beginning. I don't drink. And so he was really respectful of that. Um, but yeah, it was hard at times. But now that I've reached a place where I've really come to resent alcohol, it's just yeah. easy to go out with somebody and not care about it because I've kind of trained my brain to be like that. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Do you have an issue dating someone that drinks, period? No. Really? Mm-mm. Huh. That's interesting, too. I'd actually oh, yeah, I prefer I to a date of... a drinker than a non-drinker. Really? Yeah. Uh, why, what, what was it about the non-drinkers? That you... They have sticks up their asses. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I respect anyone like yourself that has realized, hey, I got an issue with this and stopped. I do n- I've do. i never liked people that have just never drank, period. Yeah. No. I, that, I yeah. found that very strange. Like, yeah. There is something going on there psychologically. Mm-hmm. I want to be in control, man. Yeah. I don't, want you, I, don't, I don't like anyone that wants to be in that much control. Yeah. You have to have experienced that crazy at yes. some point in your life mm-hmm. yes. beforehand. It's just, it's very strange to me. Yeah. And it speaks to something bigger that I would not be able to define. But, um, yeah, it's very odd. Like, have you ever dated someone that was sober? I know you've dated big old drunks of the British persuasion. Um, I definitely dated people who had issues with alcohol. Uh, and then, unfortunately, they maybe did their sober stints when they were not with me. <laughs> well, you, you can do that to anyone. First of all, you drive people to drink, and then they uh, get find a better place after they're done with you. Yeah, no, but there was, like, um, this one athlete who, <laughs> like, if they were in training mode, like, mm-hmm. weren't drinking... But, like, wouldn't mind if I did. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, I don't have an issue with sober dates. I have an issue with activities that are supposed to be fun but just clearly aren't. Right. Like, wouldn't it be fun if we did goat yoga? 
I know. Yeah, no. <laughs> Please I, tell me that actually happened. I would have more fun just sitting on a pier yeah. with you. Yeah. Or like taking a stroll, let's go to a record store, yeah. like that kind of stuff, rather than these weird activities. Yeah. Like, why does it have to be like a birthday party? It's the Tom Cruise effect. What does Tom Cruise do in every interview? It's not an interview. Let's go skydiving. Hey, do you want to repel with me? Tom Cruise always has this big badass mm -hmm. activity in anything mm. that he does with any profile yeah. because there's no there there. Yeah, yeah. It's there's the no Scientology. Tom yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I have the people that yeah. join Scientology are like that. And um, I think that's the same thing with people that do activity dates because God forbid that they actually have to reveal something that isn't even there. They can't just do a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It's got to be bells and whistles yeah. to distract yeah. from the fact that there's no there there. Like Tom Cruise. Yeah. How do you feel about, this will be funny, coming from a comedian, comedy shows as No fucking dates. way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I understand why people would want to do that, and it's kind of a good environment to do it because you don't really have to talk to the yeah. person as much. You can also gauge their can, sense of humor. Yeah, and you can get like a little socially lubricated, not socially lubricated, <laughs> just like comfort, like alcohol, yeah. like lubricates your personality yeah. uh, in a certain kind of way. So it's kind of a good environment to do that. Mm -hmm. However, um, for myself, not not something I want. I've yeah. never really, I've never understood the movie thing, the comedy thing, where instead of like you're hanging yeah. out, you're just looking at something. Like yeah. I'm looking at something that has nothing to do with us at all, yeah. but you're right next to me. So this is the thing that we're doing. Like yeah. my dad used to tell me before he met my mom, changed his life, of course, but he met a girl and he had season Cub season tickets, and she had like uh, casually mentioned she was a baseball fan. So he took her to almost every game that summer, and by the end of it, or something like that, like he she mentioned something like, "So, um, you know, how many outs is it before they uh, the, the, they go out into the outfield?" And my dad realized she had no idea. Yeah, she just she said barely that. Barely knew what baseball was, <laughs> and she'd been sitting there, that poor woman, suffering the entire mm -hmm. summer watching a shitty Cubs team, <laughs> not talking to my dad. And oh, I guess you could kind of talk at baseball games, but no. But imagine if you know he's like, why isn't she? chatty or like why aren't we talking she's just sitting there watching and he's thinking wow she she's a huge fan oh totally yeah. she's yes so yeah. into it that she doesn't want any dist i won't distract her i won't talk to her she's just intensely watching yes. meanwhile she's just like what's happening yeah and then after a while just being like doo, 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 doo. i mean i can't the poor woman i can't believe she put up with him for that long but um yeah that just it's just you've got a sitting buddy yeah, yeah, you're not yeah. you're not doing anything what's together. The, what's the strangest first date you've been on? I don't really go on a lot of dates, I know, right? so <laughs> yeah, no. That was the main yeah. thing that interested me about yeah. this. It wasn't the sober element. I just don't think uh, what do they call it? Gen Zs or millennial. I don't think anyone goes on dates anymore. Yeah. I yeah. feel like that's such a. I, I actually thing feel kind of point. blessed in that way that back back in my twenties, I did go on a lot of dates. Yeah. Right. I'm just like kind of more of the person who like finds somebody, and if I like them, like I really like them at first. Mm, so it's right. really hard to find that kind. Of, I don't want to go on first dates with anybody I don't feel a certain yeah. chemistry with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I'm not gonna want to go out with somebody just to go on a date. A lot of my friends yeah. do that, and they go on serial dates, and just like, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. Well, then, so yeah, you already know that you like the person if you're going on a quote-unquote first yeah. date to begin with, so um, never really a bad one then. Where was your mind ever changed when you like, oh, I think I, I'm really into this person, so we're definitely going to go do A, B, and C, and then in the middle of A, B, or C, mm. you're like, oh, this is a douche. Yeah, like yeah. A, a big red flag. Yeah. Or like a... I went on a trip with an actor who's relatively well known and he flew me down to Miami and just when I got there like the chemistry wasn't there like oh I, I and just, you're already there yeah oh, and so God. and then when I got there it was so hot it was Florida and I had taken a sleeping pill on the airplane he flew me Delta middle seat so I already knew wow. shit was gonna go Look at Joe's expression. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, really? Like you don't? By the way, that's that's what I select for myself typically. Yeah. I fly Delta, and I usually pick the middle seat. But, but if, if a guy, a guy is yeah. flying you, mm -mm. 
No, no. Yeah. Either all in. If you're going to fly somewhere, yeah. do it. Yeah, no, yeah. Don't do that. And so I took a sleeping pill, but it didn't, like, kick in until oh, no. I got to the hotel. And he's waiting outside for me. And suddenly, I fainted. Oh, my God. I know. So it was just... Um, well, you kind of roofied yourself. Yeah, there. I did. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you, you got rid of the middleman. But, but what, what do you think he was thinking in that moment? Well, this is actually funny. I was like, he was like, have you eaten all day? I was, I said, thank God. He thinks I have an eating disorder, <laughs> not a drug problem. <laughs> I was like, I, I fit the bill. <laughs> You're like, I'm so hungry. Yeah, I was like, yes, I'm hungry. I didn't just take an edible and take a Seroquel sleeping pill. And <laughs> yeah, it's all because I didn't eat today. Yeah. Uh, I was like, I'm glad you said it first. That's uh, fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how long were you in Miami for? We were there for like four days. Oh, well, so, okay. Ooh. How does that work then? Yeah. You, did you realize right away that this was not happening? Well, like, well, we all, had been, um, yeah, I took a nap. I just fell asleep. Apparently, I was snoring. I was like, oh, my God, like, uh, And this was right after I broke up with my ex, so I'm already, like, all nervous and, yeah. you know, getting over all of his criticisms of me. And I just knew if I had fainted, if I had fainted in front of my ex, he would have flipped out. So suddenly that kind of yeah, yeah caught me off guard. It was like, oh, no, I'm doing it again. Um but yeah, we had FaceTimed a bunch of times before, and every time I was like, yeah, like conversing with this dude is, it's doesn't match with me. <laughs> so you already knew that before you went to my Yeah, place. but then I was like, but it is a I, yeah, I was, it's like I could say I, I went with him, and I was like, yes. oh, okay. Sometimes story. you, well, yeah, for the story. Yeah. I've done things for the story, but yeah. also sometimes you're like, well, let me just make sure I've exhausted all all the options. Or not exhausted the options, but I really see this through. Like, I really gave it a shot. Yeah, maybe we're just not good over the phone and face yeah. it. Like, maybe, like, there could be a physical chemistry. Yeah. You know, it's scent is huge yeah. in, in the pheromones. So, yeah. uh, but God, that yeah, that does suck to get all the way there, well, to so faint, and do? then be like, Because, like, you're there damn. for another three days. Like, like, uh, I just let him another architecture tour. Uh, like, yeah, I just let him kind of talk and I'm I just kind of listen. I'm sorry, oh, that was, yeah, was, you know, uh, architecture tour, Bill. I like the art, deco. Bill. Yeah, the, the art deco tour in South Beach is delightful. If someone flew me down to Miami to take me on an architecture the club tour, suck. Ooh, ugh. Uh, you might as well go to the Jersey Shore. But it, it, my uh, fun fact, there is more Art Deco architecture in South Beach than there is in the Isle of Manhattan, ladies and gentlemen. And then the tour is just... Boom.